Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast brought to you by the Hot Take Hot Box. My name is Matt McSweeney. We have a full, full slate of things to talk about from this past weekend. We had a UFC Vegas 81, I think, and I called it 80, which, you know, McNabb chest pass, that's, that's on me. That's on me, yep. I don't think there's really that at the end of the world. Uh, but <laughs> some of you might be pissed off, so I'm sorry to, to any uh, anyone out there. But we have some misfits boxing. I know you all were huddled in your masses around the television to watch Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis get it on, and we have so, you know just some other news and notes that we have to get into. I think we're going to start with the KSI and Tommy Fury fight, just to get this nonsense out of the way, so that I don't forget about it. Because I usually forget to talk. I don't think we talked about this before. The uh, I, mean, I mean, I think we did. We took like five minutes at the end, but I wanted to. Yeah. You now I know all you hype beasts out there like to get you know talk about all these this YouTube boxing and how they're bringing back boxing and. No, they're not. Uh, at the end of the day, boxing is not is in probably the worst place it's been in. It seems, uh, you know, with, with regards to this stuff being even taken somewhat yeah. serious. Showtime's walking away from the sport, Ty. I don't know how you uh, feel about that, but yeah, I guess their last event is going to be uh, David Benavidez and Demetrius Andrade. Um, it's it's sad because Showtime's had a lot of the big events in 2023. They've had a pretty good year, but. Yeah, I guess they're just you know they're just done. They're packing it up, and I think uh, I think Amazon Prime is going to step up and try to get the rights to P- PBC, which they have you know all the big fighters right now. But it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird not having Showtime or HBO cards. Showbox was a big big thing that uh, Showtime did. They had like you know these showcase cards, but they were exciting. You know they'd be in the middle of nowhere, and you'd be like, oh, this is I'm not doing anything else on uh, you know. Tonight, so let's watch this. And uh, sometimes they used to have it on at like one a.m. Yeah, um, this past weekend they did. Yeah, a so Tim Zoo it's, action. Yeah, that that started a little late. Uh, it was a pretty good fight though. It started slow, <laughs> yeah. but Tim Zoo uh, started to cook. Um, yeah, that it's it's sad, man. It is really sad. Like HBO and Showtime, you know, Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman and Howard Letterman and just all the names that you're used to seeing. They're all pretty much done. I think Jim Lampley's actually getting back into the boxing world. Um, I don't know what he's doing or where he's doing it at, but he's he's somewhere. So it's good to see some of the old figures still get involved. You know, boxing is is really a uh, like a sport of history and a sport of like you know the people who dominate the sport of boxing are usually in their eighties. Uh, Bob Arum, um, I'm trying to think of the other fellow. Don King is still somehow managing to finesse money from young fighters. I don't know how. Um, so yeah, it's just you know the same figureheads, the same judges, the same refs, the same promoters. You know, all in all, I don't know what Mr. Steven Espinosa or uh, Connor used to call him a rat. I don't know what he's going to be up to now with Showtime leaving the boxing scene, but yeah. So, did you watch the KSI Tommy Fury fight? I did not. Okay, so I'll tell you what you missed. Uh, have you ever been to a, well, you have, a sixth grade dance? Yeah. Okay, you seen the way uh, like the guys and the girls would slow dance at the uh, you know when, when the when the time would happen you know like little yep. like, kind of like hands on the hips one person put their hands on the shoulders, but yeah. just imagine they're a little closer. It was one of the most disgusting hug fests I've ever seen in my life, dude. Like I I, I watched the whole fight just because it was kind of in, in the time of the day when nothing was really going on. I was watching yeah. uh, Oregon Washington football and had this. That was uh, a crazy game. Yeah, and I it was a really good game, so it was like kind of hard to pay attention. But KSI stands like Michael Venom Page the entire fight, and just tries to blitz in and out against Tommy Fury, who I, I will continue to say is horrible, dude. He is horrible, man. Uh, he should be knocking these guys out left and right, but he he gets a point taken away for punching <laughs> KSI in the back of the head, and Jeez. then. They go to the scorecards, which is even more of a joke. And KSI, I actually thought KSI won just off of that, the score, you know, just the point being taken. And there's only six rounds. And I thought he won the early round, but it was like, 
after I was like, oh, thank God that was over. And uh, especially with the fight before, you didn't see – so if you didn't see that, you didn't see the Logan Paul Dylan Dennis fight, right? I mean – No, but I do think that ending in disqualification was a good bet, so. Did it actually end in a disqualification? Yeah, I believe so. It says DQ on sportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I mean, I honestly, I turned – like, I, as soon as it was over, I turned it off because I didn't care to watch uh, – well, I mean, I did watch them kind of – I can't imagine how many people they fit into that ring when all that was going on. But Dylan Dennis did not have any intention on throwing a punch in this fight. That, that was the crazy part about it. I mean, he kind of just walked forward with his guard up. Logan was, you know, doing his normal thing. I mean, Logan throws straight shots and throws ball. He's huge. I mean, he's a large human being. So he's on steroids, obviously, allegedly. Yeah. So you, you just, you, you know, you know what you're walking into when you're when you're fighting a guy like him. But with all the buildup, with all the uh, everything, Dylan Dennis like just stood there. He just stood there. Did not throw anything. This was another just. Boring, boring fight. I can't imagine the people who are actually shelling out eighty dollars to watch these fights. It's or however much it's they ha- it happens because they keep doing it, right? Like it's it's amazing. So at one point, Dylan shoots a takedown, <laughs> uh, like a full takedown. Like tries to tries to wrap his hands and everything because he, he has boxing gloves on, and that fails in the sixth round, I think, or fourth, or f- I forget what it was. And the security guards hop in during the middle of the fight. And then they hop back out, which, you know, should have been a disqualification there. But then later on in the fight, this is like the most exciting parts of the fight because the whole actual contest was boring. Dylan, Dylan tries to wrap a guillotine up and he gets thrown on the ground and Logan Paul tries to land a fucking ground and pound shot. So then Dylan hops up and it's the most fight he showed the whole time. He starts throwing nukes. Logan runs to the corner, hides behind these unit security guards who are now in the ring with like 10 seconds left in the fight. And Dylan's throwing haymakers at the security guards. Like, I'm like, what am I watching? And then a million people are in the ring. And and Jake Paul's in the ring. There was a video of him handing his bag off to somebody. So he he looked coked out of his mind at this event. I'm sure. But... It just it, it just goes to show you for any of you boxers out there or you uh, MMA fighters who go and fight these guys, this is what you're walking into. You are degrading yourself for a little bit of money, which I don't know actually know how much they're paying. I can't imagine they're paying really that well because I don't yeah. know who's watching this stuff or how this stuff is making money. It seems like a absolute joke, but hey man, it it, it happened. Uh, I saw Poppy got knocked out. I, I saw that he as got well. Fucked I watched, up. Yeah, he got fucked I up. Saw that. that guy. That guy looked like a uh, a fucking a prime Sean Woodson out there. Just that guy looked like a slim. I guess they called him. Yes. Looked like a a gas station version of Prince Nassim Ahmed. There you go. And he was throwing fucking nukes. And he, uh, you know, he put Saul Poppy on his ass, and then he had Saul Poppy fighting for his life. So, uh, what, the, the, what the does, only... <laughs> for the record, I never looked this up, and I just want to ask you, what does Saul Poppy do? I think he's a, uh, I think he's just a TikToker, honestly. The, what uh, is, I, do we know what his like whole thing is? <laughs> I do not, honestly. I, uh, I, th- I thought he was Salt Bay for a while. I thought they were the same person, but now that's the guy that does um, the the sprinkles yeah. of salt, right? Okay, uh, yeah, they should fight each other. I I mean I don't know much about Salt Bay. It doesn't look like he's much of a uh, a fighter. I don't know anything about Salt Poppy. All I know is that he looks like he's on massive steroids because he out of nowhere just got jacked. So uh, it appears there was a tag team match <laughs> that ended in a draw. Yeah, it's it's like the videos you see of like the that the guy dressed in the suit fighting two other guys like where that that video yeah, pops up. Those are thing. funny, man. And it's like where do how do we get what like yeah. Who's paying for this stuff though? Like he, we talk about this yeah. all the time, Ty. Like if this stuff was across the street from my house, I'd still stay home and would just watch yeah. whatever's on TV. I'm not going to this event. Like I'm not. I don't care. I don't. I, I do not care. You couldn't even bet it here because it was an exhibition that no one takes it serious. They learned yeah. from when they made the. I, I know you could bet Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. when that was when that trailer card was a thing. Jake Paul, Nate Robinson. They learned their lesson that night because. That that Mike Tyson fight was a joke, and then they had the they they cashed out that night because I think it was a draw, and they always knew it was going to be a draw, <laughs> and, and nobody fucking bets the draw other than you. You're the only person I know yeah. who likes to try that draw <laughs> bet in. So, um, I think we've spent enough time on this. But unless there's you had, an OnlyFans uh, girl fight, 
Astrid really? Astrid Wet. Astrid Wet. Yeah, that's her last name, I guess. She moves to three and zero with a win over Alexia Grace, who looks pretty good. I'll have to check out her content. Well, I mean, yeah, but, these, um, these are you know these are ladies who are making money strictly off of their body, so it's uh, you fans know, I would hope. only. And I, I saw somebody at one point was wearing a fans Lee F A N S L Y. Uh, I guess that's the only fans rival, Fansley. So you learn something new every day. So these chicks are, you know, I'm not, never mind. Uh, I, I'm just going to keep <laughs> it moving. So uh, I guess we should get right into UFC Vegas 81, I believe it was. 81 to make sure that we have baby. everything right. Let's get my uh, websites up and loaded. But Edson Barbosa, man. So uh, to quickly go over what we had, I think. Uh, there goes a uh, book of mine just hitting the ground. I don't know if you could hear that, but I heard that. <laughs> uh, you had Sadiq Youssef inside the distance, which you almost had in the in the early like five er, seconds in <laughs> early parts of this fight. I can't believe that Edson Barbosa. I had money line, but like also bet inside the distance in another bet because I thought for sure if he was going to win, he was going to have to finish him. And I, almost, I'm, dude, he did. He did. He he had him hurt, but then he tried to go for like Darces and stuff, which I was like, what are we yeah. doing here? But yeah. that's typical of a guy when I bet him. They, he tries to become a fucking, you know, he, he thinks he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, mastermind. Tries to hit some Darces and Anaconda chokes when you're the, you know, well-known kickboxer. But he just outlasted Sadiq. It just seemed like Sadiq kind of, I don't want to call it a vet lesson, but it seemed like that in a sense where it was, it, this is just a, we, it, those concerns that we had going into the fight about, Sadiq's strength of schedule kind of showed up as the fight kind of progressed. And other than those leg kicks, and it just kind of seemed like Edson really had his number here. Yeah. Um, really, after the first round, he didn't do anything. It's crazy that Chris Lee, the one judge, uh, that our boy, gave Sadiq a 10-9 for the first round. Don't know how that happened. I mean, he almost had him out for the entirety of the first half of the round. And then he took him down and laid on him for three minutes and was just kind of in his guard. I'm like, hey, can we stand back up and fire off combinations? And then for the rest of the fight, he didn't even throw combinations. He was just throwing jabs. And he was throwing that, like, uh, push kick to the other the outside leg of Barbosa so that he couldn't throw some spinny shit, which didn't work because he threw spinny shit and almost took his head off. Yeah. Um. At the end of the third round. So, yeah, I think, honestly, Edson won every round other than the first. So I guess that would be 48-46, uh, which I think two of the judges had it. So, yeah, I have no problem with that. I was just very disappointed by Sadiq Youssef. He just, after the first round, just didn't do what he was what, what was working. It didn't seem like he was gassed, but I guess maybe he was a little bit tired. Um, I just, you know, he stopped throwing combinations. He stopped throwing hooks. Stopped throwing, you know, his boxing is supposed to be so good, but he, he just wasn't doing enough at all um he was getting he was getting out jabbed by barbosa and barbosa was throwing a lot of just nasty nasty body kicks that eventually i had i have to imagine slowed uh the power and the, the process of sadiq Youssef down um they he always tried to sadiq tried to go in the clinch a lot and it, i don't know why because it wasn't working uh he got outstruck in the clinch 25 to 15 even though he was the one initiating it so that was kind of confusing I was just confused the whole time. Like, he didn't really go for takedowns at all after the first round. I think he did in the fourth, but he wasn't trying to do that. He wasn't letting his hands go. I wasn't really sure what the game plan after the first round was. It seemed like a situation where it was his first like real five-round fight in the UFC, and he kind of... Uh... I don't know, like not panicked, but like it was just that was in the back of his mind the whole time. He was so scared to gas himself out that he really just wound, winds up kind of just coasting through the entire fight and nothing really happens. And he just kind of lets a, a, a fight that he could have, if he really put his foot on the pedal, maybe at some points could have stole around here or there. He could have had this fight. It was kind of there for the taking. I mean, he he, he hurt Edson early on, and, and Edson wore that damage for the rest of the fight. It just kind of seemed like he really, I don't know. Uh, it's just a real missed opportunity, I feel like, for Sadiq Youssef. It's, it, 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 it didn't leave this fight saying that he shouldn't be at this level. It's just kind of like, what were you doing? Like you said, I don't really understand what the game plan was. But Yeah, I was very disappointed. Like, uh, I, I, he, st he came out fire, and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, this is, you know, this is, this is what we need. This is what we wanted. This is what, what I want to see. And then uh, I just, I don't know. I have no idea what, what his plan was. He didn't have a plan, honestly. I'm, I'm very disappointed in him because... He is young-ish, and he's not a vet like Barbosa, but man, he is, you know, uh, 
he, he's been in the UFC now for a little bit. He has 16 pro fights under his belt. He's 30 years old. Like, I don't know, man. I just, uh, maybe he's not built for the highest level. Maybe. Maybe he's not, uh, but I guess we'll have to see. It's just kind of one of those where you get bumped back down and you got to fight somebody, you know, in that outside the top 15. It's going to be tough. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. 45, uh, you know, any of those weight classes like we've talked about millions of times is just no, there's not going to be an easy fight, but I guess it's good to, I, I imagine his next fight will be much, a much, much better performance than what we saw this past Saturday night. So it better be. I uh, sure hope so. For his own sake and for, you know, I'm probably going to bet him. So I, I sure hope for my sake as well. But Viviana Ruja wins a real boring decision. Uh, this was yeah. a real snooze fest. Especially the second round. That was fucking terrible. Yeah, it was just kind of. I saw some people saying that Maya should have won, but she didn't do. Uh, yeah, I, exactly. I wouldn't say that. Me Maybe either. neither of them should have won. No, know? it's kind of like, exactly. That's how I felt too. It just I was, think she won the first round, right? Maya won the first round just off of, you know, doing. She, Vivi didn't really do shit in the first round. In the second round, she took her down and got her. She was on top of her, what, like uh, the whole round, I yeah. think. Um, and then the third round, I kind of don't really remember. Funny enough, so I tuned the, mentally tuned this out. So I'm yeah, not, I'm not going to act it, it like happens. I really, you know, this was uh, this like we talked about. It should not have been this high up on the card. It just shouldn't have. Yeah. I, I know they wanted to put a lady. Late, there's plenty of ladies' fights you could have featured higher up on this card than these two because this is just a boring matchup between two older women at at 25. That you know, one had their title shot already. Vivian Arujo is not. No one's going to think that she should be, you know, in the title conversation. She's 36. But now, yeah. you know, with that win, she's going to have to fight somebody up on that level. And it's going to be, you know, who the fuck knows what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, really. I mean, who, who, you know, who cares? You, This is your one win of the night it was your Arujo <laughs> money line bet. Uh, I had my decision, which, you know, I was almost there, but just didn't get it all the way. Uh, how about Jonathan Martinez, dude? Uh, leg kick God. He spammed leg kicks. Those inside leg kicks, he really... You, you don't really see a lot of people throw those because it's dangerous. It's kind of easy to check those uh, as yeah. in comparison to those outside ones. But, I mean, Adrian Yanez, he just kind of just got that inside leg chewed up and eventually it, it was it was too much for him and he had to, you know, he succumbed to them. So it's a big win for Jonathan Martinez. They, this was a razor thin sort of uh line where you know minus 105 minus 110 sort of on either side but uh good win for jonathan martinez and the sky is the limit yeah i mean man he was just he was kind of channeling his inner uh his teammate and good friend uh chris gutierrez just absolutely i was i was surprised i was like damn adrian like are you gonna check any of them are you are, are we surprised that uh, a notorious light kicker is coming out here throwing light kicks um, very upset with Yanez. I mean, Yanez. I mean, I guess there's not there's not really much you can do, right? But at a certain point, but eventually, I mean, you got to know that's what that guy wants to do. That's all he does. That that's his that's his game. He is a devastating, nasty kicker. I think he's a little bit underrated. Um, I said that before, but now I think you know with this a uh, uh, light kick knockout win, he has two of them now in the UFC's history. I think that's really going to get people's attention. And I mean, dude, again, I just can't. I, you know, what, what do we have with Adrian Yanez? You know, is that a finished product? A guy who just, you know, kind of throws wild hands? Like, that's cool and all if you're fighting Tony Kelly. But at the top level, I guess, you know, you got to have something else. And I don't think he has anything. 29 light kicks. Whew. That's a lot. And it, they were vicious. Like, they were they were damaging leg kicks. And it just, it just you could tell it kind of just ate away at them throughout that, you know, the end of that first round. And then as soon as that second round started, you kind of knew, like, this – we're not going to be here much longer. It, it really, yeah. it really evaporated quickly. But it's a good win for Jonathan Martinez. Uh, Yanez Looked a lot is, like Yanez, though, is in a tough spot ever since that triumphant victory over Tony Kelly. It, yeah. it's been bad. Yeah, it looked uh, that fight looked a lot like uh, Robbie Lawler and Melvin Manhoof back in um, Strikeforce, where Robbie was getting his leg kicked literally, you know. Uh, <laughs> To like the top of his head, like his leg just swung all the way like a pendulum, and then he uh, knocked him out cold. So, if only Yanez could do that. Yep, it's uh, you know, it's tough to do that though, especially when your leg is kind of you don't have your leg underneath you, and the oh, other yeah. guy is spamming that leg kick big time. But how about Michel Pajera taking care of uh, Andre Petrovsky in a little bit over a minute 
which, you know, that right hand, I think it was a right hand, kind of just put him to the ground, and then those ground and pound shots were vicious after. It's just bad matchup on short notice for Andre Petrovsky, who, you know, Pavetta looks good at 85. Looks like he, you know, is it's the appropriate weight class for him. I'm sure he's going to run into some people who are going to be able to, you know, match his physicality and size, but... Uh, you know, right now that's just, if he's going to be fighting wrestlers and people, you know, of the ilk of Petrovsky, it's going to be a bad night. I mean, Petrovsky was fighting for his life to get through that Mearshart fight and yeah, it's, you know, it's not, <laughs> not too good, not really good showings. You know, he looked good in the term, the Wellington tournament fight and big win against Maximov and Phil Hall. I mean, those guys are not easy fights necessarily, but these last two, he, it's kind of, he's hit a little bit of a wall here. So He's gonna need a, a nice. I don't know. I really don't know because those matchup matchups has been have been great. They're not gonna get much better the higher you get in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, this could be a a uh, an interesting run at at one eighty five for uh, Pereira, Pajera, Pajera, whatever you want to whatever you want to call him. I think um, his athleticism and explosiveness works well at that division. There's a lot of guys who are slow and plotting at one eighty five. It's a, it's a lot different than one seventy. So I think he might be able to have some sustained success there, kind of like Johnny Walker. You know, once you hone in the craziness and kind of get him under control and just have him fight a, you know, just just straightforward, no fucking bullshit fight. I think he could win those. I mean, he just absolutely destroyed Petros. Petrovsky threw six, attempt at one strike the whole the whole minute and six seconds. So, yeah. I mean, as clean and quick as a win as you could have. For Pereira in his middleweight debut, yeah, there's just really nothing else to say about it. Uh, he did also come out with the Israeli flag, so there you go. Yeah, it's always, you know, it's a tough one. But uh, how, how about Christian Rodriguez taking out Cameron Simon via decision, though, United decision. We had the inside the distance. Yeah. Uh, just hey, another great win for C-Rod, dude. Yeah, he looked good. I mean, you know, miss weight again, so yeah. that sucks. And, uh <laughs> Michael Bisping told him he should be ashamed of himself, which I was like, all right, uh, hey, calm down. Bisping always lets those intrusive thoughts win, man. He he, he, <laughs> he really does. Um, I think Sal Diamato gave one round to Cameron Simon. I'm not sure which round. I guess maybe the first. Uh, I have to find his scorecard. But, yeah, I thought he looked pretty good, uh, uh, Christian Rodriguez. Maybe maybe he has to move up, which I, th- I don't think would be the end of the world. I think he could probably do well um, – if he moves up a weight class, and he'd definitely be able to make, make, uh, make weight. Um, let's see which round he gave him. Yeah, he gave him the first, Cameron Simon. I think the first round was pretty close, but I thought the bigger shots, the better shots, everything all around was Christian Rodriguez. I thought he just looked crisper, more sharp, um, just just better. I mean, they're both good. They're both, you know, tough. Um, but I was very impressed with Christian Rodriguez, his, able, his ability to get it to the ground, kind of keep it on the ground, and just um, – be the better grappler, better wrestler in this in this fight. <clears throat> How about Darren the Damage Elkins, man, with a uh, we, we should like you kind of said uh, before we started the show. We if we had known or if we had really looked into it and realized that T.J. Brown is from Arkansas, you know, it, it probably would have changed our mind a little bit <laughs> on our. I saw uh, him walking out to one of two active fighters born in Arkansas. I was like fucking great, yep. Kevin Bryce Mitchell, I believe. So. And yeah, you, red flag. You never know with these guys because they don't really have a coach anymore. As seeing as yeah. Mr. T.J. Brown's coach is uh, blacklisted by the UFC. That being James Krause, James Money Krause. Um, <laughs> that's my nickname for him. But uh, yeah, listen, Darren Elkins. Uh, that's why we we stayed away from this one. We want to bet it. You just didn't know. And uh, Darren Elkins is just always going to be. He, he's a zombie. He's always going to be a tough guy. He's very good. Well, I shouldn't say he's just competent in all facets of mixed martial arts, and he has ridiculous endurance and a ridiculous just ability to uh, just go battle through damage and just trauma. And he just keeps fighting forward. So it's just Darren Elkins is a medical miracle. Yeah, and his wrestling and grappling looked on point this yeah. fight. Five takedowns, two submission attempts, a reversal or two, a bunch of control, and then just wore him down. And he, he had that choke, I think, in the first or second round he was close. And then uh, third round just wore him down, man. That was a really good win from Darren Elkins, honestly. How about Ms. Lisboa, which I don't think – I think I had submission here. We really didn't even come I, – I actually, I think she did almost sub her in the 
maybe the second round, I think. But this fight, you want to talk about boring. This was a snooze yeah. fest. Um, Oliveira was like, these girls were both landing like good shots on the feet. But all they did was clinch, and all they did was try to hip toss each other back and forth, and they really weren't successful. And then Lisboa would drop down for a takedown that uh, Oliveira would do a good job of defending, and then they would just continually recycle that, and it just really boring either way. It's it, there was no change in game plan or anything of that nature. It was just really a really rough fight to watch. Yeah, this one was uh, one I had my uh, eyes on my phone screen for most of the fight. I d- I didn't watch much of this fight. You didn't nothing miss happened. Much. Yeah, no, Lisboa took her down and that was it. And then in the third round, Oliver took her down, yes. but just terrible. Terrible. And didn't care who won. I was like, okay. Like I, I don't care Lisboa. I thought we she won, lost. but it, we all exactly. The only person who really lost here other than Oliver is us. And that's uh that's unfortunate. But how about your boy T Rex taking out Brendan Marat with a absolutely fire knee up the middle that, <laughs> that rocked crazy. his world. And he just and got just on threw top. him down. Yeah, pushed him. Get off me. Scott. Well, before the fight, Brendan Marat said he didn't think Terrence McKinney was a fighter. He was just an athlete. I think his opinion might change a little bit after that. Yeah, well, after you get your <laughs> lights he, turned off like that, that's usually what happens, man. Yeah, and he was down on the on the ground for a, a pretty long time after that. Knee was nasty. I mean, that's just Terrence McKinney, man. He comes at you like a fucking firecracker, and I mean, you just have to you just have to withstand that storm. But that's a big dark heavy storm and uh five long minutes to, to get through so he's uh he's going to continue to be this killer be killed round one demon i guess kind of the uh the bigger version of daniel lacerda if you will we always got to bring daniel lacerda off during this podcast <laughs> it makes me sick but uh how about melissa dixon which we didn't know much about her going into this but melissa dixon which, this was crazy because I think she lost the first round. I, I don't, she got I, dropped. She did, right? Yeah, she got dropped. And then uh, Alex Eva kind of had like dominant position on her. And then she eventually gets like swept at the end of the round, I think. Yep. And then Melissa Dixon, was it was all her from then on out. I mean, she – I will give her credit. Powerful, powerful like wrestling. Uh, really good uh, on top. As soon as she got control of you, it was really difficult for her you know, Alex Eva to really move or do anything. And Melissa Dixon kind of just made sure she held that like top arm. She was kind of like sneakily threatening that arm bar. She really was going to give it to her, but Alex Eva had no, uh, answer for her, for her, you know, control on top is there was nothing. And she kind of just laid there and let it happen. It seemed. And it's just really uh, a bad matchup for a good win for Melissa Dixon. It's a good, uh, good debut. Yeah, her uh, her striking looked pretty good after she got even before she got knocked down. She was landing the jab almost at will. It seemed like, um, and her husband in the corner was giving her pretty good advice. So, yeah, good good way to rally after getting knocked down by a nice straight right. Chris Lee gave her the first round despite getting knocked down. Which again, Chris Lee, I, I think is just one of the fucking worst judges we have yeah, in sport. But <clears throat> you know what are you going to do? Um, yeah, this you know just a low level fight, but yeah, good for Melissa Dixon getting a, a win. I mean, she's less experienced. And she was making her UFC debut, and she didn't look like she, uh, you know, the nerves got to her at all. How about Chris Gutierrez taking care of a business against the Mongolian Knight? Uh, I did not see this fight, so I'm going to count on you to tell me what I missed here. Uh, he, a lot of leg kicks, a okay. lot, a lot, a lot of half his uh, per, half of the strikes he landed were leg kicks, and the the whole fight took place at distance, the entire fight, pretty much. Uh, Al Tang Hagee at the end of the. I think third got a couple takedowns, but he didn't do anything with them. He probably should have tried that earlier. Uh, the first round, he got just, I mean, walked through. Uh, I'm trying to get light kick. Yeah. Oh, 21 light kicks in the first round for Gutierrez, 19 in the second, 16 in the third. So that was just his plan. Slow him down with the kicks and kind of keep him at range, and that's exactly pretty much what he did. Um, perfect, perfect execution of his game plan for uh, Gutierrez. And honestly, Jonathan Martinez. They both had great fights and great wins. Those guys are really leg kick masters, man. They have kind of honed in on that aspect of the uh, mixed martial arts. Dane Driss, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, how about, I mean, this one I, I didn't, well, I mean, we kind of saw her winning coming, but Emily Ducote put some serious fucking damage on Ashley Yoder's face, man. Did you see that picture of her? I didn't see the picture, but I did uh, I did watch, oh, I don't say all of it, but most of the most of the fight. And then I went, I went back and rewatched it and kind of skimmed over it. Yeah, her, her hands look good. 
I don't know how many kicks she, she was. I was going to say, Dakota was uh, throwing some pretty good kicks, too. Um, yeah, she was just – it's crazy because she's so much smaller than her and, and, you know, giving up a lot in reach. But uh, Ashley Yoder just – not UFC level, I think no. is pretty fair to say. Um, so I think she's probably done with this fight. Yeah, I sure hope so. She's eight and nine now. Really don't – She's lost five of her last six. Don't so. want to see her back. Yeah, it's – We've seen enough, and uh, I really wish I would have fired Dakota in this, but uh, it's there was yeah, really no uh, nowhere nowhere to make money on that specific fight. But there you go. That's probably the quickest breakdown we've ever had of a UFC card. But that re- <laughs> it really was a snoozer for the most. I mean, most of it was. It was either they yeah. finished it early, like the Jonathan Martinez fight. I thought was like my favorite uh, of the because like, it just kind of that had the most intrigue for me, and the and the Christian Rodriguez fight, but. Other than that, it was kind of like, you know, either Michelle Pajetta and Terrence McKinney getting a guy out of there in under a minute or, you know, it was just like, it was kind of all over. And then some of these were just decisions where it was just real snoozers. The first three fights were decisions. And then you got the yeah. Lisboa one, the, you know, the Viviana Rougeau. There's only 11 fights. We lose the one, you know, where we had all, uh, my entire bankroll was on the Lacerda, Lacerda money line. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh. Sadiq Youssef and Edson Barbosa get fifty thousand for fight of the night. Uh, Jonathan Martinez fifty k and Michelle Pajeda gets fifty k. So, uh, any arguments there? No, no, I think it's probably fair. Any news and notes, Ty? Before we have to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, so we have a BKFC event this weekend. Oh my god! Uh, we actually- <laughs> it's always good when I start when I start the sentence saying that um, they actually just made a. A main event, Mike Perry and Eddie Alvarez. That's going to be happening wow. uh, in a couple months, I believe. I'm not sure exactly when. I just December saw. December second. There you go. So that's going to be good. Ben Rothwell, um, Todd Duffy. <laughs> that's also on the card. Ben Rothwell, Todd Duffy, Jimmy Rivera, Jeremy Stevens, Beck Rawlings is getting in there against the old lady Christine Ferreira. Ferreira. Yep. The misfit. All right. Um. Yeah, and then some guy named Kai Stewart's fighting a gentleman named Howard Davis. So big um, names, I think. Yeah, they're, this but, is um, going to be in Salt Lake City, by the way. I know you'll be uh, probably <laughs> chartering a PJ over there to watch this. One, I, so. I will definitely be tuned in. But this weekend, we have I don't know anybody really on the card. I guess um, it's Barnett Richardson, not Josh Barnett, and not Anthony Richardson, but Keith Richardson and Reginald Barnett. Um, Cameron Van Camp is giving it a go. I, I can't imagine that's going to go well for him, but he's trying. So in the co-main event, we have a fellow named Tony Soto who is fighting Kevin Kroom. Okay. Sponsoring Tim, uh, Tony, so- Tony Soto. Sponsoring him. Giving him money, I guess, to train with him. Tim Elliott. Wow. Tim Elliott saw his... His chance to get some revenge for Kevin Kroom, who banged his oh ex-wife Dina Mazzani <laughs> on his wedding night, mind you. Is that really okay. what happened? Yeah, Tim Elliott married Gina Mazzani later that night. One of his best men banged her. So, that's allegedly, horrific. Allegedly, that's crazy. That's that's not even something you see on Vanderpump Rules. Shout yeah, out to, dude. Uh, Shout LBP. out to Vanderpump. Um, so... <laughs> So he was like, "Fuck! All right, I'm plot." He he must have had this in the chamber. This might have been in the works for a while. Tony Soto, I think, is uh, has a couple bare, BKFC or bare knuckle fights in general. He saw him get matched up. And he's like, "Oh fuck! I'm taking you under my wing. I'm teaching you everything I can, and I'm giving you all this money so you can beat the fuck out of Kevin Kroom. If I can't beat him up, you will." So that's that's a very interesting and kind of just crazy uh, storyline to monitor this weekend. Maybe they get in the cage with each other after the fight. Maybe Gina Mazzani's in there. Who knows? It's going to be like a Edge, Lita, Matt Hardy thing, I think. Shout out, man. That's a deep cut right there. WWE shit right there. So so I guess that's a thing. I guess that's going to happen this weekend. Bo Nickel also said he wanted to step in and fight Hamzat Shemaev. Thank God that didn't happen. You think he would have got cooked? Yeah, it's just too early. I think he would have got punched in the face, and he would have been like, fuck. That, you know. I haven't been hit hard by anybody, and that's uh, that's a that's a that's just a tough guy to fight. I mean, Usman's fighting him, and I don't know if you saw the video. Usman said his knee popped. Justin Gaethje said no, he didn't say that. I think he did say that. Either way, he doesn't have good knees, and he's probably going to get torched by Mister Shemayev. So that's my take on the fight. I, I don't think Usman stands a chance here. 
Yeah, we'll have a whole show come out tomorrow, uh, basically breaking that down. And uh, the Thursday and Friday, you'll have the chance to sit there and wager everything that we tell you to wager, because uh, that's, of course, what everyone does every time we drop a podcast. Or you fade <laughs> us, which is also a smart move. Smart, mar- yeah. smart move. But um, we do have one more thing to talk about before we get out of here. Um, unfortunately... Pat Militich came up short this weekend against Mike Jackson. And uh, listen, that... He's winning the fight. Apparently he was beating his fucking ass. But he just, you know, yeah. the fact that he's 55 kind of <laughs> caught up with him. That he's eligible for AARP. And, it, uh, you know, he came up short, man. And uh, what can you really say? The Croatian sensation, uh, you know, let, he retires after the second round. He was apparently up 20-17. to 17. He was going to get cleaned out, apparently, from uh, reports. But now Mike Jackson gets that second win on his record after getting eliminated by Pete Rodriguez and winning <laughs> his two wins. <laughs> his two wins. One was against Dean Barry via eye gouge. So he <laughs> wins that via disqualification, basically. That. And his other win is against a 55-year-old Pat Militich, who retires after beating his ass. So Yeah, he couldn't get off a stool. Also a win against CM Punk, but that was a no contest. <laughs> so because I believe he was on the marijuana. So listen, uh, what whatever happened to Dean Barry now that I'm thinking about it? Has what, what he's kickboxing now? He should be. He's kickboxing I mean, against John Marquez in Titan FC. So Dean the Sniper Barry. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. Uh, so good luck to everybody involved. But um, yeah, what what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I wish I would have gotten a, a stream of this, but I just I really didn't care all that much and kind of forgot about it. I went and looked later on. You sent me the tweet where the guy was like, apparently, <laughs> Aaron Brosteter was like, you know, he, it, it didn't go our way. Like I wish I would. I would have had a mega whale play on uh, Pat Melitich money line. But um, yeah, thank, thank God. God. Um, yeah, that's um, strange. But welcome to uh, welcome to odd MMA. In welcome to caged aggression or whatever the fuck the name was. But it kind of uh, just happens. Things just happen nowadays. We don't know. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But uh, not much going on this weekend, I guess. Well, I shouldn't say that. For bo- in the boxing world, I should say, um, there is Jack Catterall's getting back in there against Jorge Linares, who I can't believe is still fighting. But um, that'll be in Liverpool, and uh, I think oh, we have a couple more London fights. I guess Alexis Rocha and Giovanni Santillan, 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 Santillan. They will be in uh, California nothing. fighting, and then uh, yeah, next week is Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, Oshaki Foster, damn, he just won that belt. He's getting back in there. Defending his belt in on opponent soil in Cancun. Uh, what? You know, don't have too much tequila while you're down there. But uh, and Amanda Serrano this Friday is getting in there against somebody in Orlando, Florida. Maybe I should go uh, go check it out. Yeah, I love how you have to say like against someone. Like we don't even know who she's, she's I mean, fighting. Some Daniela Ramos is, but she's getting in there and she's going to try. I guess so. There you go. That's, there you go. So we'll have an episode come out this, you know, before UFC 294. Is that the number? Yeah, I believe it yeah. is. Uh, Islam Makachev, Alexander Volkanovsky, Hamza Chemaev, Kamaru Usman. We'll have a, a whole slate of picks to give to you, our listeners, who we appreciate very much. Uh, this has been the Shoulder Strikes MMA podcast. My name is Matt McSweeney. I am Tiger Pone. And as always, as always, make sure you bet against. Kamara Usman this weekend.